Yeah. So my talk is entitled and the component stands alone. Um, and you know, when, when Adi was doing the CFP, uh, it was right around the time of angular 14 and 15 being released. Um, and I was thinking heavily about angular 14. Um, and one of the things that really was on my mind was when angular 14 and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that Angular 14, 15, and 16 have been kind of the Angular Renaissance, um, where Angular is enjoying this um, renewed passion, and we're seeing some amazing things um, that that are coming from the Angular team, um, and so. Um, I just lost my speaker notes. Well, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll wing it a bit. Um, never mind. There they are. Sorry about that. Um, but, you know, the Angular team has given us these amazing things. But why was the first thing they gave us um, standalone components? One of the things that they said, um, you know, when, when they released this were tweets about this was one of the, the most requested features. You know, it finally landed in Angular, one of the most requested features. And why is that the case? Um, and so I did a little bit of thinking. And I was thinking about um, a game that we played when I was a kid. Um, and so you guys are going to get a bit of a history lesson. Um, because as you can tell from, you know, my graying hair, I, I've been around for a while. Um, and when we were in kindergarten, we played this game called The Farmer in the Dell. Um, and basically, all of the kids stood around in the circle. Uh, well, no, all of the kids stood in the middle of the circle. Um, and there was one, one child that was chosen to be the farmer, right? And the farmer chooses all these different things, right? They choose a partner. They choose some children. They choose different farm animals. Um, and you just play this game. And, you know, they're slowly choosing children out of the middle of the, you know, of the group of children. And they're going and standing around and everybody's singing this song and playing this game. But in the very end of the game, the cheese stands alone, right? Um, and... <laughs> That was kind of where my mind went, right? Standalone components, the cheese stands alone. My mind is a weird place. Um, and sometimes it makes strange connections for me and I just have to go with it. Um, but, you know, the, the cheese stands alone. It, it, it's by itself. Um, and, you know, in the game, it's, uh, it's a little bit strange to be the cheese because you've got all these children in a circle around you and they're sitting there singing and the cheese stands alone, the cheese stands alone, and you're in the center as the cheese, the person that wasn't chosen, standing by yourself. Um, so why did my, you know, um, this is great, a fun history lesson maybe, but why does this have anything to do with Angular, right? Um, why are we talking about an old children's game. Um, and I don't even know if kids play this game anymore, but what is the point of talking about and the cheese stands alone? Um, you know, how? what does that have to do with, um, with Angular itself? One of the things about the game that, that always struck me as kind of funny as a child was the farmer is pretty greedy right? The farmer's picking all these different things. The farmer's picking a partner. The farmer's picking some kids. The farmer's picking um, all of the animals and whatever else, you know, they choose to do in the game. Um, but this, this, this farmer is very, very greedy and brings this whole huge entourage with them, right? Almost like a, a modern day rock star or something. So what does this have to do with components? Well, in the olden days of Angular, you know, very from the very, very beginning, um, we've always had, you know, components. We've always had directives and we've always had pipes, right? Um, 
but the thing is we needed a way to group them together um, and to tell the to tell the renderer that these were available to be rendered. Um, and ng model was an elegant solution for that, right? Um, so in the ng model, we could import any of the any of the models modules we had, right? Um, but the module takes a component, right? Boom, the module's chosen a component. Um, and then the module takes a directive, right? So now we've added directives. And one of the things to recognize here, and this is often difficult for new, new developers to understand, is when do I put something in the declarations? When do I put it in the imports? When do I put it in the exports? Why do I have an exports? Why can't I just use a declarations, right? Modules have some things that for new Angular developers, you have to understand these questions to understand our modules. Um, and, you know, in the end, the module takes a pipe. And, and, you know, this is all good and well, and it goes back to our discussion on, um, on the farmer in the Dell, right? Because uh, you could be, you know, you could be singing and the module takes a component and a module takes, right? Just like, and the same thing as the, as the song. And this is why my mind made this co connection is that the, the module tends to be very greedy. Um, and then we have to think about something called tree shaking. Uh, tree shaking is what allows our modules and bundles to be smaller. Um, but if we want to lazy load um, components in a module based system, and we want to have good tree shaking, we have to be very, very careful about what we import. We have to be very, very careful about what we add to our declarations um, because anything mentioned in our module then becomes part of our bundle. Um, and so now we've got a little bit more complexity, right? We, we want to lazy load, we want to tree shake, um, we want our bundles to be small and fast, but now we've got to do even more thinking about it. Um, and this this led to one of my favorite named um, patterns of all time. Well, not maybe not of all time, but um, one of my favorite angular named patterns. Scam, <laughs> right? You, you go into you go into a meeting where you're talking with um, product owners and um, managers and things like that, and you're talking about performance and how can we improve the performance of of our Angular application? Um, and you know, before um, standalone components, um, this scam pattern came up. And so here you are in the serious meeting saying, "I think we need to do a scam." And then <laughs> you look around the room, and everybody's like, "Has this person lost it? What's going on?" Why are they talking about scams? We're not going to scam any of our customers. What's going on here, right? Um, but scam stands for single component and module. Um, but it can be used in the case of modules or of components, right? So here's a, here's a component with a single module for our component. Here's a directive. Um, and our directive module, right? And here again is our pipe in our pipe module. But again, we have to understand the modules. We need to understand that our component should only import the stuff that it needs. It can't import everything that our big giant module imported, right? Um, and our directives the same way. Um, there, there's some nice benefits to this, right? But again, our component, you know, our module takes a component. Um, our module takes a directive and our module takes a pipe. Um, we're, we're, we're back playing the farmer in the Dell, right? Where we are slowly um, building up these pieces of code. And the other thing that's a little bit annoying about this pattern is that we get this module proliferation, right? 
Now we get a whole bunch of boilerplate for every component we create, a whole bunch of boilerplate for every directive we create, um, and a whole bunch of boilerplate for every pipe that we create. And I'm going to apologize to Brandon. I didn't mean to bring that word up. Don't ban me, please. Um, but um, you know, we, we, we create all this extra stuff. But what's the benefit? The benefit is we get better tree shaking out of it, right? Um, as we as we break things up into smaller components, then the you know Webpack, um, which is what we were using back in the day, um, and and we're still using it. Angular 15, um, Angular 16 gives us some nice um, some nice tools that um, I really can't wait to use, but. You know, Webpack can reason better about our modules and understand which dependencies go with our components and which ones go with our directives and which ones go with our pipes. And this is the this is the benefit of the scan pattern. It's a much more modular pattern. Um, it builds better mod um, better bundles and it allows for better um, you know better tree shaking and better lazy loading. Um, so now we're to stand standalone components, um, and standalone components are a gimmick, right? Um, and I will admit that when standalone components were first released in the Angular 14 as a preview, I didn't even touch them. Um, I honestly thought, well, they're kind of gimmicky. I don't see the point to them. Um, you know, I'll wait for them to become or get out of developer preview and then maybe I'll see how the community uses them and then maybe I'll add them to my application. Um, and I couldn't have been more wrong. Luckily, um, I had a community member who decided to take it on themselves to convert um, the application I was working on at the time into complete standalone and then push a PR for me. Um, and I am forever grateful to that community member. Um, he has asked me not to mention his name, um, but the work that he did um, pushed me into standalone components and he was so right to do it. Uh, so let's talk about standalone components and pipes and directives and how they're different. Um, the first thing that you'll notice is that if we want to do standalone, really the only big change is we add the standalone true flag to our directives, our pipes, and our components. Um, that allows us to do things like import. So our standalone component can import our standalone directive straight into it. It can import our standalone pipe straight into it. And you know it's got its template, and everything we need to know about the component is right here. The same thing for our pipes and our directives. They can also import. But the power that this brings um, is, well, and there we go. Actually, you know, the component stands alone, right? Um, the component does bring stuff along with it, right? We're, we're adding directives. We're adding pipes. But we we don't know anything about modules here, right? We've imported the common module from Angular, but that's because the Angular library bundled that module for us. Everything we've written ourselves are just standalone and we just add them, right? They, they stand by themselves. The directive stands by itself. The pipe stands by itself. And I kind of messed that up, right? But um, that's one of the big, the big differences is that we don't know anything about modules at this point. We don't have to. And tree shaking, um, we, get, we get the benefits of the scam style tree shaking, but we don't have to write all the extra modules, um, which is huge, right? So that only the components that refer to things will be bundled with the things they refer to, um, which is a, which is a big deal when we're looking at bundle sizes and lazy loading and things like that. Um, this is a picture of my beautiful puppy. Um, she's amazing. 
Um, just a loving puppy. But this is kind of the way she sits during my workday. Um, she just hangs out in my office and waits for me to finish work. Um, and as soon as I finish, she's up and, you know, with me. But I, I needed to call that out. She might, she's been joining me off and on today. Um, and she's been excited because I'm allowing her to sit on my lap and things. But um, I, I love this picture because, you know, is there a point to this? Um, why can't I just stick with modules? Why should I learn, a, you know, why should I learn this new way? The old stuff works just fine. And that's fair. If you want to stick with modules, there's no reason not to stick with modules. If you understand modules, stick with modules. I would like to present um, some some points to think about as you're um, as you're making this decision. the The first major point that I want to point out or that I want to bring up is that module or um, standalone components, directives, and pipes are way easier for new Angular developers to learn and maintain. Um, they don't have to figure out, okay, I wrote this component. I added the tag in this other component. What do I do? I added this pipe, but it's not, it's not working, right? Um, we can bring on new developers, and they don't have to know about modules. Eventually, we can teach them about modules because modules have their place and they are still important to the Angular ecosystem. But for new developers, they don't care about them and they don't need to know about them. Um, I wanted to <laughs> I wanted to show this slide, right? I should have put a jump scare warning on it. Um, but how many times have we seen this error in a unit test, um, even in an application as we're developing it, um, it, it winds up being a very, very common error in Angular. Um, and it's, you know, when we see this error, um, we, we know how to fix it, but it always raises a little bit of, um, raises a little bit of anxiety for me. And the reason for that is, do you like playing hide and seek? Um, oftentimes, it's a matter of seeking out and finding which um, module holds the place where we need to add our declaration or our export or you know our imports because we didn't import a module properly or who knows what it is, right? We're, we're, we're looking all over the place to find where this should be added so that our unit tests run or the new component that we added works in our pages. Um, and this can be frustrating. I, I've encountered this times where I've struggled to find the module just because of the way um, the modules have been architected in the system. Um, with standalone components, like we saw before, standalone components specify everything they need. And if you're missing something, you just add it to the imports of the component. No more hide and seek. Um, and, well, and here it is, right? Our, our imports right here show everything we need. There's any modules that we need. There's any components that we need, any pipes that we need. Um, so everything we have or we need is right there in the component. Um, you know, there, there are a couple of things. How do we bootstrap a standalone component? Well, it's super easy. Here we go. We've got our component. It's named app. All we need to do is call bootstrap application and give it the app. HTTP client, great, provide HTTP client. Interceptors in my HTTP client with interceptors, awesome. And there's so much more. Provide client hydration is amazing. It's coming in Angular 16 and this does server side rendering and this is, whoops, let's go back. This is all you need to know to do server-side rendering and hydration in Angular 16. Nothing else. You just add this line. You know, we can add our routes and everything too. Um, I asked permission before building this slide from um, from from Brandon and Jordan um, because I wanted to make sure that what I was saying was fair. Um, File-based routing in analog 
is only possible by standalone components. Um, Brandon was able to add file-based routing because standalone components came along. Um, in Cypress, component testing is so much easier. If we, and I wanted to make sure that I add this, um, you don't even need this app button anymore. You can just mount the property or mount the button itself and pass any properties that you want um, to the inputs. Um, so much easier. What aren't we seeing here? We aren't seeing any modules. We aren't seeing any dependencies that we need to set up because the component contains all of them and Cypress understands how to do it. Um, this last little bit, I need to go just a little bit quick, um, but I've got <laughs> way too many components in modules, right? We've got millions of components and I'm, I'm exaggerating here, uh, but you know, some of our applications have been doing modules forever. Um, and how do we move over to Angular um, standalone components? Um, if you're using NX, and again, here's my my little dog who, who loves the snow. Um, if there's any snow outside, she will find it and bring it into the house. Um, but um, if you're using NX, the NX generators are amazing. NX has the ability to take any scam component and turn it into a standalone component. Um, this is guaranteed to work on any Angular version greater than 14.0. Um, one of the things to recognize is that Narwhal is changing their name to NX. And so if you're using NX 15 plus, the generator is at NX Angular scam to standalone. Um, if you're using an older version of NX, it's going to be the at Narwhal Angular scam to standalone. Um, just a little bit to be aware of. Um, and then in Angular 15.2, um, Angular gave us their own generator the Angular core standalone. And this will analyze every component and every module in your, um, in your application. It, it will ask you questions about what you want to convert to standalone, and then it will convert to standalone for you. So the generators are a very cool thing. Um, you know, the component stands alone. It contains everything it needs, and it does that to make other things awesome. Um, I just want to say thank you. Um, I am Jason. I am a senior staff engineer at Bill. Um, if you guys are interested in working at Bill, check out our um, our, um, our our recruitment page. Um, we are hiring right now. Um, you can find me on Twitter. Um, come join me on Twitch, and, and you know, send me an invite on LinkedIn. Uh, but thank you very much. <laughs>